What's up, everyone? It's Kanan, and welcome back to Ruby Alternate Realities. What if Yang was a Saiyan? We've got a lot to go over in this version. Um, but just so there's no confusion, yes, I'm still going to be continuing this series through the month of October, even though this is the spooky month for the channel. Um, like I said, this will be continuing. I might still play Final Fantasy XIV a couple of times, or I might just wait until November comes around. Um, and if anything major is announced that I, we're interested in, if there's any new Ruby news or anything like that, we will uh, uh, cover that. Um, we're still pausing on Ice Queendom reactions. We have actually tried to email Rooster Teeth ourselves, pretty much to try and find out what's going on with those, if they're going to be allowed and all that, because no one really else uh, is doing reactions to the English dub. Uh, they did the Japanese, but I've not seen anyone do it yet. But, um, yeah, if it comes down to it, we will um, try and find some way to do it. If I look a little brighter in this video, it's because we got another light and uh, I'm actually, I've actually got both of them on uh, to see if we can make things a little bit more brighter. I may put one on the other side over here so it's like shining both ways, but hopefully it looks all right. We're actually talking about getting a new camera as well because we need to upgrade it. <laughs> it's been giving us some issues here recently with glitching out and all that. But, um... So yeah, if you guys enjoy the video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, click that like button, leave a comment. Um, so last episode, a lot went down. Everyone arrived in Atlas. It has pretty much been taken over completely by the Atlas military, run by Ironwood. Ironwood did some uh, not so nice things to Penny, uh, pretty much turning her Pretty much programming her to always attack Yang on sight, even though Ruby was able to get through to her a little bit. Um, the Aesops have, against their will, been turned into androids to make them stronger. And there's also a very secret, uh, what did I call it, pretty much a project going on called Project Scorpion, which involves a being that is even stronger than the Aesops. It is pretty much a contingency plan if Yang is able to defeat the Aesops. Now, of course, just like in the original show, Ironwood is also scared about Salem attacking, though Salem, as of right now, has not shown herself. But there is also Cinder lurking in the uh, darkness because she wants the Winter Maiden powers to add to her already growing collection. She has the Fall and Spring Maiden powers. And please remember, Winter has already turned against Ironwood in this, so she is not in line to become the Winter Maiden. And things will more than likely not play out in this like they did in the show as far as where the Winter Maiden powers end up. So... <clears throat> Leaving off, Yang uh, was able to pretty much describe to Pietro, who wants revenge on Ironwood himself for what he has done to Penny, uh, how to build pretty much a, gravi a gravitation uh, training room for her like she trained with Raven. Pretty much it's a large enough chamber to train in that uses gravity dust to increase and decrease the gravity inside of it because we all know Saiyans love gravity training. It is one of the best ways for them to get stronger very, very quickly. And also we do not have a hyperbolic time chamber in this for her to use. <clears throat> so Yang starts her training in earnest pretty much. She starts as soon as it's ready to go. Now Ruby and the others can't exactly handle that intense gravity, especially since she is starting where she left off, right at 100 times normal gravity, and it's going to build up to 500, which as of right now, Pietro uh, says that is the highest it can go, though he is working to try and make it uh, go higher. So, of course, Ruby and the others train how huntresses normally train, by doing training uh, exercises, and running special missions for Pietro while keeping under the radar of the Aesops and General Ironwood. They also have the Happy Huntresses who are willingly helping them, and that's because they are wanting to take out um, Ironwood as well. And last time, they were able to get a hold of, of a lot of neat stuff, 
including the new gauntlet for Yang, and of course the new outfits for everyone, plus other components that Pietro was able to use to upgrade everyone's uh, gear. Now, of course, Crow, Jean, Nora, and Ren are also there, but their role is not as big in this story as they are in the, in the original show. It's mostly, you know, this is a Yang story. Um, so Yang is spending a lot of time training. Like we're looking at every, almost every hour of every day. If she does stop, it's to rest, to eat, to sleep, stuff like that. And then one day, well, actually one evening when she's going to go back to training, Blake stops her and tells her, Hey, you need to take a night off. And she's like, but I can't, you know, uh, we've got a lot of enemies here that are pretty strong, pretty much stronger than me. Um, so I need to get stronger as soon as I can, but can't you take just one night to have some fun? And Yang, Yang's law and she pretty much gives Yang the cutie look and she's like, fine, what did you have planned? And even though it is not Blake's scene, yes, it is the dance club. And this version of Yang probably is not much of a dancer like the version in Ruby, but she still knows how to have fun. And so, yes, her and Blake go on a night of dancing and hanging out. It is pretty much a date. Uh, on their way back, you know, they've had a long night. They're tired. Um... And Blake pretty much thanks her for everything. You know, uh, when they first met, Blake did not trust her. Um, and Blake really started sticking around Yang to learn the secrets of her strength. Because at that time, she thought maybe Yang had found some secret power that all Thanos could do. Which technically, if Yang wanted to train Blake, she could teach her how to use Ki. Because... Just like in Dragon Ball, in this world, everyone has the means to it. You just have to train in it. But uh, if it had not been for meeting Yang, Blake would not be as strong as she is now. She maybe might not have been able to defeat Adam, especially after what he'd done to himself. She really does not think she would have been able to fight him on her own. And so she leans in and gives Yang a kiss on the cheek, which... Yang definitely uh, reacts to, you know, her tail stands up on the end and also like, and she's blushing. She's like, because this version of Yang has, well, I mean, really in Ruby's version, we don't know much about Yang's dating life. We're really probably led to believe that she's never actually had a serious relationship in her life. And this one definitely has not either. She has dedicated all of her life to training, getting stronger, uh, fighting strong opponents. And of course, being a big sister and all that. And so, yeah, this is, this is a first for Yang. She's never really delved into romance or anything. Um, and she places her hand on her chin. She's like, wow, you know, um, that's probably the first attack that's really ever got me, which Blake giggles a little bit. And, uh, they, they go back and, uh, things progress normally. Um, Ruby Weiss and Blake and the others train, Every day that they can, they go on special missions for Pietro. They sometimes run into the Aesops, but are able to lose them. Um, now, before we get into this next part, I want to go over power scaling a little bit. Now, please remember, even though Yang pretty much already has the means to unlock Super Saiyan, I would not say she is Dragon Ball Z levels of strength. Could she destroy the planet? Probably if she put everything into it. Um, if Ironwood's nightmares came true, and she, if she could she destroy Atlas? Yes. She is strong enough to literally blast Atlas out of the sky. Um, but as far as like the Aesops go, Clover is definitely the strongest because he's the leader. He's always going to be by default the strongest. Harriet is a very close second. She is the second strongest. Elm and Vine are kind of the mid-tier. They're not, like, maybe Elm physically, like, brute strength is stronger than him, but energy-wise, they're about around the same. Marrow is, of course, the weakest because he was the newest member. He's the youngest. He's the least trained. So, yes, he is, as far as brute strength and energy goes, he is the weakest. Whereas the subject of Project Scorpion is way stronger than them uh i would say maybe imper like either 
100% Frieza level to Imperfect Cell level, maybe. Somewhere around that. We're, we're nowhere near Perfect Cell levels of power. That's more of Cinder right now. She has both uh, Fall and Spring Maiden powers inside of her. She is nearing Perfect Cell power levels at this point. Where if you want to say where Salem is, maybe Kid Boo level at this point, but that's only a rough estimate. Right now, I'd say Yang is stronger maybe than Goku after he healed from the battle with Captain Ginyu. Um, and once she unlocks Super Saiyan, she may already be around android saga goku because she's been doing so much intense training yet she's not unlocked it it's kind of like the the inner the power and energy is there but once it's kind of like you know it, it it's about to the dam is about to burst and once it does burst it's just going to multiply to where it needs to be where she fully is because you know how saiyans are they can store a lot of energy and through anger and everything else, they can unlock even more wells of energy. <clears throat> and where's Penny is, I'd say Penny is about, she's about on Harriet's level right now. Uh, maybe a little bit under just because this Penny is just like Penny in the, sto in the story. She's strong, but she's not exactly trained. Uh, whereas Harriet was a trained military, uh, a military trained huntress in a way. So, and even if you are about as strong as someone, or maybe even stronger, if you've got more experience and you have the training to back it up, you will always have an edge. Unless you are just a thousand times stronger than someone, then no matter how much training you have, it's it's not going to do anything. Um, it's where a lot of people say maybe... Kid Goku might have been stronger than Master Roshi at the end of the last tournament, but Master Roshi had so much more experience that he was able to leverage that to beat Goku. And of course, Goku's legs were shorter than Master Roshi's in that final bout. But, um, but yeah, we're going on. Now, is it realistically that they could hide from the Aesops and all that for a month or so? Yes, I mean, it's been done in real life, people going into hiding and staying hid for months on end. Um, now, of course, actually going out and doing missions and all that, maybe not, but you gotta remember, they have Ren, they have his semblance that keeps them hidden and all that. So, they have ways to do that. Um, it's just that I'm not gonna go into that great detail of how they, are, they would stay hidden long enough for Yang to really complete her training um also during this time maria is further training ruby with her silver eyes to where ruby is able to use it whenever she needs it uh instead of a greater need being there uh, so a couple of months go by ruby weiss and blake and the others have increased their their strength uh, Yang has reached 500 times normal gravity, and Pietro has able to at least make it to where it can reach 800 times normal gravity, and Yang wants to reach that before she will consider her training done. So, while that's going on, Pietro has used the Happy Huntresses to try and find a way to bring back Penny to him. Pretty much find whatever they can that will rewrite the programming so Penny will not attack Yang uh, on sight, but also to where Ironwood can't use anything to b have her come back to him against her will. And so they do discover that Watts has been working with Ironwood. Now, of course, Pietro knows who Watts is. He knows what he's capable of. And so he pretty much tells the Happy Huntresses and Ruby, Weiss, Blake, Jean, Ren, and Nora to kidnap him, pretty much to infiltrate Atlas and to bring him to Pietro. That way, maybe they can leverage something and he will either have what he needs right away to bring Penny back or at least can tell them what they'll need. So... Yang, of course, wants to go, but no, they tell Yang she is the ace, pretty much in this kind of situation. 
she needs to finish her training and then she will join them when she is done because she she's almost there she's almost to 800 times normal gravity and so they go on their own and yang stays behind to just to make sure if yang is needed she is going to be ready but they're kind of hoping that they're able to get in get watts get out and not be detected so in a lot of ways it kind of plays like how the original show went as far as them infiltrating you know you still get the the goofy nora hat sending weiss through the pipes and all that and all and uh all that it's just that penny is not with them um but thanks to reconnaissance that the happy hunters have done they are able they know where watts is and of course like they said we don't need an all-out assault on this place because if that does that's going to alert the asops and then they're just done because none of them have the strength to go up against the asops especially if all of them are there and so they encounter watts they are able to grab him but not before he is able to set off an alarm and of course that uh lets the asops know that they need to get there so what the, ruby quickly thinks okay robin you and the uh you and the happy hunter just get watts out of here her weiss blake jean ren and nora will stay behind and hold off the asops because the asops may be stronger but they're outnumbered at that point so maybe they have a chance but of course robin and them want to stay and help but they're like no getting watts to pietro is the is one hope that they have that they can get penny back on their side fully so robin and the others leave using uh may's semblance and all that and they get out without the asops knowing about them but the asops do of course show up and you know harriet's already bummed because she doesn't see yang they've already been pre-programmed to know that yang is the greater threat um but you know unlike some of the others like marrow she welcomes the changes so she's she is full fully um willing to go uh to follow the programming of eliminating yang so is clover elm and vine don't like they're more or less just following orders marrow is the only one who's just he, he he's hating life right now um puppy boy is not happy um but anyway the fight begins and really they just ruby and the others have no chance the only one they're able to really subdue is marrow because his heart is not in this anyway but even six on four they're just they're not doing very well um so by the time robin and the others arrive yang is exiting the chamber she has reached 800 times gravity she feels like her pat like at the moment she turns off the gravity and steps out to normal gravity she can't get over just how more stronger she feels like she feels like that she could break something just by poking it um but they arrive just in time for her to come out and say we've got him here he is but they tell him ruby and the others stayed behind to fend off the asops which yang already panics that's her friends that's her sister and pretty much at this point that's her girlfriend that are in trouble and so she quickly leaves she doesn't care if ironwood knows she's heading that way she pretty much like i she doesn't fly out of the place because of course that would let everyone know where they're where they are um she's at least patient enough to leave the underground underground laboratory and then head that way um and things are not looking good uh jean nora ren they're they're all down for the count they're all hurt um weiss is at least weiss is at least doing a good job of keeping marrow at bay but ruby is just completely at the mercy of vine elm harriet and clover all four of them they are literally toying with her um and this is where we start to see a darker side to characters like Harriet, who they plan to kill her. Like they 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 are going to kill her to leave Yang a message. But before they can do that, Yang blasts through the building and lands, 
And, you know, it's one of those classic shonen entrances. We all know what they look like. Um, and she looks around, seeing her friends hurt. Um, she sees Weiss fighting Marrow. She quickly sends a blast that way, hits Marrow, and completely incapacitates him. She has completely outclassed Marrow at this point, and she's just in her base form. Uh, she sees Ruby laying on the ground. She's hurt. She's bloody. She's like at an inch of her life and it angers Yang um, but of course Yang now being active in the area Ironwood is panicked and he has sent that he wants Harriet and uh, Clover back to him because once Yang um, incapacitated Marrow the Aesops all have something in them that once they are either unconscious or dead Ironwood has a way of knowing that. So now not only has Watts been taken, but now one of the Aesops is incapacitated. He's only out cold. He's not dead. Yang didn't kill him, but that is enough to panic Ironwood. So he wants Clover and Harriet back to him, where Elm and Vine can stay back and take care of Yang. And so they quickly leave. Yang doesn't care, though. She's angry. She is mad. And Elm and Vine not being as sadistic or anything as Harriet, they don't really say nothing. They just get ready for a fight. They know that uh, it's coming. And they attack Yang. And Yang is deflecting all of their attacks. She's blocking. She's sending attacks back. Um, her blasts are overtaking theirs. And they can't believe just how much stronger she's gotten in so little of time. Um Blake and Weiss quickly run over to Ruby and, you know, get her out of the way uh, because they were really rough on her and they did it purposely. They did it to hurt Yang um, because, of course, Ironwood has the intel that Ruby and Weiss, uh, Ruby and Weiss, Ruby and Yang are sisters. Um, and as they're fighting, every now and then there's this glow that appears in Yang's eyes and her hair kind of flashes. Like it's it's coming. The that dam that I was talking about is about to burst. And um Elm and Vine don't know what it is. But the whole entire time they're fighting, Yang's like, You hurt my friends. You hurt my sister. You almost killed her. And what? Just because you were told to? Just because it would get to me? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, that's to get to me is one thing you didn't want to happen. Um, and she's just getting mad the entire fight to the point where the aura that's around her is flickering gold. And um, Vine notices that Ruby, Ruby and the others are gathering up and they're trying to leave. And he quickly attacks. And Blake is the one helping Ruby at the moment where Weiss is trying to get John and the others up, especially John, because they could really use his healing right now. And um, he attacks Ruby and Blake, but Yang saw it in time and sent him back uh, into the wall behind Elm. And, and Elm looks forward and Yang walks up to her, anger on her face, and she lets out this intense scream and everything around her almost collapses her aura turns gold her eyes turn green her hair stands on end and it becomes golden blonde yang has unlocked super saiyan for finally um and just like in the original well i wouldn't say yang and the others easily defeated the aesops but Unlike the false Super Saiyan form, Yang is conscious. Like, she has control of what she's doing. She quickly looks back at everyone who are just gapped at what they're seeing, and she tells them to get out of here. Get back to Pietro, because they're not safe here anymore. And, of course, Ruby's out of it, so she can't say anything, but Blake's like, you know, I can fight with you. Yang's like, no, not this time. The, this is something I need to do. Uh, I need to send a message to Ironwood. Uh, it, of course, it would be a little bit more than that, but, you know, 
time restraints and all that, I can't cu- go c- come up with a whole entire dialogue to go here. Uh, Yang does get a little mad because the anger within her is, it's kind of like how with Goku was. When Goku first went Super Saiyan, the rage and anger that is needed to, to maintain Super Saiyan was like, it was messing with him. It was almost about to return him to the Saiyan that he was originally going to be. And Yang is struggling with that too. The anger, the hatred, it's turning her bloodlustly into bloodlust almost. She wants to just wreck everything. So she is trying her best to keep a, keep a hold of who she is and that the two targets are in front of her, not everything else around. Um, And so they, so Weiss is the one to see that Yang is struggling with this just by looking at her and tells her, Blake, we need to go. She'll be fine. Um, and of course, Blake does the whole, you know, you better come back, you know, the whole love interest like little thing. Um, and they leave and Yang turns back to them and she's, she's like, I'm going to make you both suffer for what you did to my sister. Um, and even as androids, they can tell that they've crossed the line. Um, but orders are orders and they attack and Yang just decimates them. It's, it's a two on one fight, but it, it might as well not be. Yang is faster. She's stronger. She's hitting hard. Her blasts are way more effective. Um, Vine is the first one to go down. She doesn't kill him. She doesn't tear any limbs off or anything like that, but let's just say the sparks are flying. Um, when he falls to the ground, um, Elm doesn't last much longer either. Even all of her raw strength, she just can't compete with Yang. Um, once both of them are down, she charges up an attack because she knows exactly where this is going to send them. She holds enough back to where it won't kill them, but enough force that it'll send them flying. She charges an attack up. She lets it go. The blast completely goes through the building and where does it go? Right into the tower where Ironwood is. Not, this is to send a message. It's not to kill him, even though Yang Yang could easily do this. But I want to keep Yang kind of close to how she is portrayed in the show and that, I mean, the only character Yang has killed is Adam, but it's pretty much not unless it's necessary. I'm not going to kill people just because I'm stronger and that I'm angry. That's what she, that's what she was previously just struggling with. She wanted to kill them at first. She just wanted to just disintegrate them, but her other side won out. Her human side uh, won out and it's like, no, that's not the right way to do this. <clears throat> Show Ironwood that you're not the monster that he thinks you are. But the blast completely propels Elm and Vine into the tower along with the rest of the blast. It misses Ironwood just by a little bit. It doesn't hit anybody, but it does explode and they come crashing in. And he looks outside the opening and he can see this burning golden glow. And it lifts, she lifts up out of the building and she fully powers up. Not full power, but enough to make a statement saying, if you want to continue this war, this is what you're up against. I don't want to say it's it's like Goku's ally to good, nightmare to you speech from the original Funimation dub. Even though as a kid, I thought that was a really awesome line. Um, it's kind of cringy now when you know what Goku was actually supposed to say there. But... Um, Pretty much, it's it's saying, if you thought I was trouble then, now you've got a Super Saiyan to worry about. Um, she's made her statement. She just glares at Ironwood, and she leaves. She flies away. So now, three of the Aesops have been defeated. Mero is pretty much captured by Ruby and everyone else, and Elm and Vine are down. They're, they're out of it. <clears throat> Ironwood panics, and plus Watts is now uh, captured as well. So Ironwood panics and says, awaken Project Scorpion. And everyone else is like, but if he's not ready. We have no idea if he will even listen to you. And he said, get Clover and Harriet ready. Wake him up. And so he takes the elevator down. 
into where the lab laboratory where the Aesops were turned into androids and where this Project Scorpion is. And uh, Clover and Harriet are there standing, you know, at attention, ready for orders. And he orders them grabbed and strapped to uh, these chairs. And they're like, what is this? And he says, if Penny was the first line of the fence, you, you all were the last line before I really got desperate. And you've already shown that you, t you all cannot handle her, much less Salem. So I'm going to my secret weapon. And this secret weapon requires a bit more strength. And so I'm taking yours and giving it to him. And they're just horrified. They, they've been deceived. Like, you know, they willingly went through this thinking that it was because Ironwood believed in them. But this whole entire time he did it not really knowing if he could trust them to get the job done. So he made a contingency plan that's really pretty much going to feed off of them and get the job done in itself. So their energy is completely siphoned to whatever is in this container that has Project Scorpion in it. Um, and pretty much when it's done, they're left lifeless. They're not dead, but they might as well be. Um, their eyes are glazed over. They're not moving. They're barely breathing. And Ironwood orders them to open, uh, open the, the container. And the container is opened. And if you already guessed who it was, it was from the name Project Scorpion, then you were right. It is, of course, Tyrion, the Scorpion Fauna serial killer who <clears throat> Ironwood had captured, experimented on him as well. And he is pretty much this version's cell. He is an android, and he feeds off the energy of the other androids. Um, though he doesn't have to absorb them. And this version of Tyrion is way more deadlier, way more stronger, way more faster. But the only thing Ironwood is scared about is that he wonders if Tyrion will still listen to him. Even though he's been experimented on, he's been augmented with all these different things to make him an android, Ironwood is still not sure if he will listen. So there is a collar around his neck, pretty much a shock collar. If he gets out of line, Ironwood uses it, and it's supposed to reprogram him in a way that he'll start listening again. And when Tyrion wakes up, it seems everything is good. He's listening to Ironwood. Um, Ironwood, Ironwood tells him your mission is to destroy this girl in which a, um, you know, a hologram of Yang shows up. And um, one thing that they were able to do was they were able to implement him with a way to um, sense energy signals. And he feels her right away. He knows exactly where Yang is. So he smile, you know, he smiles that Tyrion smile and laughs, and uh, licks his lips and says, <clears throat> "Well, good thing I know exactly where she is." Meanwhile, Yang arrives. The first thing, you know, she goes back to normal, and the first thing she wants to know is is Ruby okay? In which John has already healed her at this moment, and so she's fine. She hugs her. She's like, "I'm so sorry I wasn't faster." Ruby says, "All that matters is that you got there." She also checks on Blake. You know, Blake says she's fine. She caresses Yang's face but, and tells her, you know, I'm just glad you're still you. Um, she checks on everybody else. Everyone's fine. Marrow is still out. Uh, they do put him into a little containment field because they don't know what he's going to do when he wakes up. And, of course, Watts is tied up to a chair pretty much. And so Pietro begins his interrogation of Watts to hopefully get his daughter back. Meanwhile, Ironwood lets Tyrion go. First thing Tyrion does is kill everyone else that's in the laboratory uh, besides Ironwood, Clover, and Harriet, who are still pretty much dead. They're unconscious. They, they have no energy. They can't function. Uh, Ironwood quickly shocks him back into, uh, into control, and he's like, sorry, I was just a little restless. Um, but Ironwood is willing to take that risk. And uh, even though he shouldn't, because this is a crazed individual, he has made way more powerful than he should have ever been. And uh, he's like, well, do your job, get out there and take care of this problem.
and Tyrion says gladly. And you guessed it, he can fly. He flies through the ceiling, leaving a hole, and heads to where he feels Yang is. And that is where we will end today's episode. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please, once again, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, click that like button, leave a comment. And as always, guys, this is Kanan. Me and Jess love you all very, very much. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you in the next one. See ya.